All right, who wants to uh, kick it off? I know that I know that Yush does. What? Oh, all right. Start it off, buddy. <laughs> all right, My all right. Here. What's up, everyone? Um, so what were we talking about first? Okay, yeah. So what an options contract between... is and how it differs, you know. Yeah. So the difference between the equity and an option, right? So you're buying an option. You have two sides, calls and puts. Um, calls are you're, you're kind of predicting or you're kind of betting, in quotes, uh, that the price is going to go up. You're betting that you're, it's essentially going along a stock, right, in a sense. And um, puts is kind of like going short on a stock. Right? So you're betting on the downside that the stock's going to move down. Main difference is, so one contract signifies... Um, essentially, you owning 100 shares. Or, yeah, one, one contract is 100 shares of the equity. But obviously, you don't pay um, amount for the 100 shares. So you're just saying you have a right um, at that strike price, whatever strike price you buy at, to um, buy it at a fixed amount. And if it goes above your strike price, you have the right to exercise. The option. Um, happy. I don't. You should have told me. We'll go over. Bro. So we'll go over exercising later. Um, uh, another difference is also the leverage it provides your money. Also, uh, obviously, many people know like you can get stick returns for options. Um, this is because the leverage it provides you. This is why many people are kind of addicted to options. <laughs> Uh, to say at least, but you gotta realize it also is the same thing for the downside. Um, so we'll also get into how to mitigate your risk using options as well. Um, that, that's another big difference. It's, it's pretty common to get a 100% gainer in options. Um, one big thing with options and equity is you could, uh, with equity, right, you lose all your money if it goes to zero. But with options, um, you know, you can lose all your money very quickly. If the option um, doesn't go in the money or it's uh, in the money uh, minus how much you paid, you could lose all of it by expiration. So that's another important component of an option, right? You got a expiration. And um, most of the time, most options, if you're playing out of the money, buying out of the money, I'll buy like one or two derivative points of current price they usually close out of the money unless there's some strong momentum move yeah uh, you started to cut you off yeah we're gonna have to also go over in the money out of the money and everything because this is right for beginners so oh my we'll God, get right. we'll get into that too um so yeah, that's kind of a basic overview of you know option contracts in general um so as we said, the call is essentially going long on a stock and taking a put is going short on it. Um, so I think we should go into like the contracts and the options chain, what everything means, and then um, you know the whole in the money out of the money stuff and how all that affects the prices. Uh, either Chathan or Yush, if one of you guys uses TOS, because I do not, uh, I think we should use that options chain instead of Weebles. Uh, Alright, I'm sharing my screen right now. Okay. You guys see my screen? I'm seeing it, Gusto. What? I see it. Okay, yeah, I'm on my phone, so. Okay. okay. Oh, I see it. All right. Um, let me pick a style. I'll just use Apple. Okay. So this is TOS. Um, this is the mobile. I mean, the desktop version pretty much essentially looks the same. It's just not as condensed or whatever. Um, but here is going to be your uh, option chain. Uh, I can go over Weeble too. I know some people use Weeble as well. Weeble is like a little bit more simpler. 
um, with their chain data. But basically, what you're going to have, so this is going to be your main screen. I'm not necessarily looking for all the information that we're going to cover today, but um, you know, here, so uh, you'll have like your bid, um, you know, which is what somebody's willing to pay for the option. You have your ask, which is what uh, somebody's willing to sell it for. Uh, your mark price or your mid price, that's going to be like the um, the difference between those two things. Um, and if you keep scrolling, like implied volatility, uh, which is basically the expected movement of the specific option uh, contract. Uh, volume, how many uh, contracts have been traded that specific day. And then below that, below the volume number, it says OINT, which is open interest. That's how many open contracts there are. I think it goes hands in hands with what Gusto mentions with confirmation. Um, you have to be very disciplined to not jump the gun, wait for confirmation, because like I said, if you're not disciplined with that, you can, you can be down a pretty good amount um, pretty quickly. And another thing on top of this is, I mean, people have their preference, but uh, I'm a big advocate in not looking at your P&L when you're in an options trade. Uh, as I said, they go up and down like crazy. So if, especially if you know you're red on it or there's a good chance, don't look at it because there's a pretty good chance if you're coming from equities over to options and then you look at your P&L, you're likely going to panic sell. I did that many times when I came over to options. Um, it's just something to get used to. But this can help your, definitely help your trading a lot because it'll make you very disciplined and very emotionless if you go back to equities because um, it can really help your discipline and you'll become much more robotic, I guess you could say. Uh, if you really, really discipline yourself, take emotion out of it. I got one more as well. Um, you have to respect the chart. You know, I know we, we said, you know, don't look at your PL, things like that. If you're using levels, like, you know, I just put the chart in the chat for Apple. If you're using levels or even supply and demand, whatever you're using to enter the trade, if you have the confirmation that says it's time for you to get out of the trade, you have to respect that. Even if it's for a loss, you know, that, that's how bag holders get created. And this isn't like comments. You know, it, your contract is going to expire eventually. If you have shares, you know, you can bag hold shares as long as you want, you know, unless they go to zero. You know, options, if, especially if you're playing weeklies, they're going to expire if you don't cut them. If you, you know, it's easier to cut for a 20% loss or a 30% loss than, you know, having them expire worthless and you lose 100% of what you put into the trade. Yeah. Um, I also... I have to mention this. I swear to God, I feel like every time I'm on voice. <laughs> um, Stop trying to so, feel Yep, exactly. <laughs> so if I were to ask you guys, if I were to ask you guys, why do you want to start to learn to trade options? Obviously, there would be a bunch of different answers, but I guarantee you someone is going to say the answer of, oh, you can easily hit multi-baggers or something. Something along those lines with options. Yeah, that's true. But... If that's, you know, a sole reason of you coming to play options, you're going to lose because you, you can't come in with that attitude of trying to hit home runs. Um, options can be really effective if you, if you play it right because of the leverage you gave your money. And this isn't the hitting home runs. This is, this is, oh, a quick scalp can give you 20%. If that same scalp was in equities, you would sell for 20% guaranteed most of the time because you don't see it you know, that often from a scalp, but if you're trading options, you have to get rid of that home run mindset, and as Gusto mentioned, focus only on the chart, get rid of all other biases and emotions, and just focus on the chart, you know, trust your DD if that's what you go based off of, um, whatever it is, go based off that, not percent gains or wanting to hit this big play, because it's, it's going to screw you over way more times than, than you realize because i got so many people that you know ask oh how do you hit these crazy percent plays or, or you know i want to hit like x percent gainer like no why would you want to do that just play the chart and you'll naturally hit it you know if you chart out okay if it goes above 120 dollars, my next price target's 122 125 then 130 
you know, if that pans out correctly, then you're probably going to hit a home run without even trying. So that's what I would say also. It goes hand-in-hand hand with discipline. you got to really be disciplined with this. Uh, can we talk about uh, position sizing real quick? I was about to answer the question, but absolutely. That's I, I want to get everybody's perspective on this one before I drop this answer. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I was going to say, um, seeing if you're listening, I mean, it, position sizing is literally going to be up to the individual person. I mean, we got some people that are comfortable literally full porting. Um, I wouldn't advise that, especially if you're new. But um, it's literally just basically what you're comfortable with. But, you know, if you focus on just compounding and not trying to hit home runs, I mean, it's, you know, I think on a, on a good day, for me personally, I may put, you know, 10, 15% of my port into a trade. Uh, I know recently since I've switched to trading my main account more, I usually have about 50 to 60% of my settled cash available at the end of the day. So that means I'm not putting a lot of money into these trades. Um, it's literally about, you know, finding those quality plays that, you know, there is a good enough potential move to make it worth you putting your money into that play. Um, but, you know, like I said, ultimately, it's just, it's your preference. You know, just know, you know, it, basically, whatever you put into a trade, you have to be comfortable losing every penny of that. If you go on with that mindset, you know, and you can accept, you know, that that's the risk you're willing to take, whatever you're willing to put into it, um, you know, just be okay with that going to zero. And it's not saying that it will, you know, as long as you manage your risk appropriately, you have to be comfortable with whatever you put into a trade going to zero. Uh, and what, whatever that number is at that point, you know, then, hey, go at it. Yeah. Um, I see you guys kind of covered it in chat, but I just want to say it out loud in case people aren't looking at the chat. Um, a lot of people are asking what we do with stop losses and if it's based off the percent, if it's based off the chart. Um, I mean, it is. it kind of depends on your situation also. I always pretty much do it based off the chart. Um, I personally do not use a hard stop loss because, as I mentioned, you can be minus 30% and plus 30% um, pretty quickly. So I don't go based off the number. I go based off the chart. If I see it's a triangle and I buy before the breakout and then it breaks down, um, I'll, I'll just sell pretty quickly. Again, goes back to discipline. but. Let's say a trade goes in your way. Uh, it does go your way, sorry. Um, and, you know, you're up a pretty good amount. You're mostly out. You sold most for profit. Um, we like to leave runners sometimes. They're called just like a couple contracts that we let run, you know, as far as possible. Something like this, I would personally set my stop loss at, you know, break even or something just above that. So I still get profit and then see how long I can ride it. And if I'm happy with a profit, I'll sell then. But that's pretty much the only time that I'll use a hard stop. I don't know if anyone else has anything different to share with that, but same that's thing. My preference. Yeah, same thing. I mean, trail and stop on runners. But other than that, you know, if, you know, this literally all goes back to discipline. If you can get that part down, not having a hard stop loss isn't going to kill you, you know. There's plenty of times where, you know, we'll cut a trade if it goes against us. And, I mean, dude, you don't even have to see, you know, like I said, this is usually based off of technicals. But if you can clearly see on the chart that the trade is going against you, you can get out before your level, your entry level is broken. And, you know, save even more money, you know, save from losing even more money. But, um, yeah, like I said, everything as far as stop losses go, it goes back to this point. Where is the stream at, fellas? We just talking? We were streaming. You showed up late, buddy. Go back to Disney. Go back to the park. <laughs> I'm just playing. What's going on, man? How you doing, Tori? Oh, just, just here for the knowledge. That's all. Is that Totoro? Yes, it is. I so love holy. that guy. I'm just saying. Yes. Oh, I, I love you. <laughs> all right. Um, is there anything else? Uh, Shaitan, you should go so that you guys have that's been critical, like to mitigate your risk with options. Because, in my opinion, um, it's a pretty big deal. I mean, I got a few more things, but 
I mean, probably the only other important thing is knowing when to walk away. Don't be over trading. You know, we don't do this for boredom. We don't do this to fill time. This is not supposed to be a fun thing. I know, you know, I think it was like about two and a half months ago. It was on a Wednesday. And I remember like our large cap room was on fire that day. And I think me personally, I made like six trades that day. And I only had like one red trade out of the six of them. But I mean, I look back on that day and that was literally probably one of the worst days I ever had trading because I was already up so much money in the morning. You know, by the time lunchtime rolled around, there was really no reason for me to trade. You know, and like my second to last trade of the day was red. And I gave back a good amount of money. And then the final trade was green. But the only reason I took that trade was to make back the money I lost on the red trade. So, um, you know, again, discipline. Um, and, you know, avoid over trading. You know, you can't be trading emotionally. Get in, make your money. Once you hit your goal, even if you don't make it, you know, directly to your goal, if you're green on the day, walk away, especially in like the conditions that we have right now in the market where, you know, a lot of things pop at the open and then just fade off, you know, during lunchtime and into the afternoon session. Oh. Yeah, find, it, find your sweet spot. Like I know happy you always talk about that. Finding your power hour to trade. Yeah. Uh, I also want to mention, since majority of this Discord is into pennies, um, if you see that they have an options chain, walk the fuck away. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Do not play options on on penny stocks. There's there's no reason to. You don't have to. You can get crazy moves with pennies. Um, I got many people that ask me a lot if I play options on penny contracts. No, I do not. I have a couple times. And I will tell you, they all expired worthless. I'm not even kidding. So, um, it's just, it's not worth it. Uh, Chathan, if you want to talk about rolling uh, contracts real quick, in case yeah. not everyone yeah. is looking at chat. I'll just add something to, to the penny one before I go over rolling. But uh, just with, with penny options, yeah, don't, don't normally play it. That's a good lead into like OI and volume, like open interest. Yeah, for sure. Uh, volume. You want to make sure there's there's a lot of volume, a lot of open interest across the strikes, because that that'll let you know uh, how how easy it is to get out of your contracts, and if you're going to be able to get it out at the price you 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 want, and it tells you you can versus you know what they're going to offer you. Um, for rolling out contracts, I mean, all rolling is basically is a shorter. Uh, way of saying I'm closing out my current contract and I am buying the same strike contract with a further out expiration date. So if I bought, let's say on Apple, I bought the 150 call expiring, uh, what is what is on 9, 10. And let's say, and that's the Friday. So let's say on Tuesday, I don't think, you know, I either think this contract has lost too much or... I think I haven't given myself enough time, but I still think I'm right about the move that's going to happen. I will close the contract and open up the 150 call again, but for maybe the 917 strike or the 924 strike or expiration. The 150 strike on the 917 versus uh, just closing it and then being like, I'm done with the play. Because sometimes you just didn't don't give yourself enough time initially. And you can't, you know. If you're swinging something, especially, you can't gauge what it's going to do uh, on one day. Like it, your your opinion can change over a couple of days. So if you think you may need more time, just you know roll out your contract. Uh, you don't have to hold. Definitely don't need to hold your contract all the way out till Friday and let it go worthless before you're like, oh, I need to roll it out. But you know, if you think you need more time by like a Wednesday, go ahead and move it on to the next week's strike. It may cost you a little more, but if you're right about the move, it should it should end up being profitable anyway it shouldn't really matter yeah i think uh one thing he mentioned that we actually didn't really cover too much is oh hi um again that's open interest um i think it's important to note that many times contracts with a low oi will be very spready they'll have a very long uh widespread um so you want to find a contract preferably that has a lot of oi and again oi is just the amount of people that have that specific contract open currently um 
a lot of times you'll find if the OI is pretty low, like in the 100s or 200s, um, you might have like the bid and the ask at maybe uh, $50 and then $150. So you might not get filled unless you buy close to 150 but then you enter that trade and you can't sell unless it's close to like 50 So you're right off the bat, you're losing a ton of money. So it's very important to look at the OI. Um, just as a general guideline, I usually tell the people in large caps to only take contracts over like 500 for OI. That's just a preference, but just make sure you look at the spread, look at the OI, um, and you should be okay. Just a quick thing on, on OI. I know a big, I know especially for new traders, a big misconception with OI will be like, oh, there's a lot of OI on this strike. This must mean a lot of people think it's going to go here. I'm going to buy that strike. OI, it, it may, that may be right, but that's, it's, and OI can be people long the option or people short that option contract. There's no, uh, like if, there's no way, especially on, unless you go do it, the work yourself going through each transaction, uh, open interest itself just tells you exactly how many contracts are open at that strike, regardless if it's a short option trade or a long option trade. So that's just like a misconception. I wanted to just put that so people don't, you know, cause I know I did it a while back. I would be like, oh, there's a lot of open interest on this strike. I'll, I'll. Clearly, that's what people think is going to happen, and it, you know it doesn't happen because just misinterpreted it. You need to watch. You know, I think if you just understand what, what's going on with the stock, you'll be fine. Don't don't read into certain things too much. Yeah, that's uh, that's important. And two things to come from that. Number one, I would say don't overcomplicate it. Like he said, just focus on just focus on the stock. Uh, focus on what you know. Uh, focus on the chart. Don't overcomplicate it just because it's options. Um, in general, if you treat it like a normal stock, you, you'll make money if it goes in, in your direction. But I think what Chathan mentioned is a perfect transition into order flow. Um, you know, programs like Unusual Wells or Cheddar Flow, and what they mean and all that stuff. Uh, so generally, you know, many times people will see some order flow come through on like news or something like that or one of those programs I mentioned uh, where it's a super large amount premiums um, you know either bought or, or sold of a specific contract um, and many people you know they see this and they're like oh follow the money uh, you know if you see someone or you see something come through where it's like one million calls or $1 million in premium on the 150 call came through, something like that, people would be like, oh, let's follow the money. Clearly, that means it's going to go up. But um, we've mentioned a few times, this isn't always the case. This can just be uh, toots or wells, whoever. It could be people hedging. Um, this is pretty common to see. So in my opinion, I don't use any of that stuff. I just go based off the chart. Um, I know Yush and Chathan and Gusto have their own opinions, so I'd love to hear what they think. I personally don't look for it at all, really. Yeah, I can I can go first. I'll just say I don't use them at all. I have no interest <laughs> in using them. Uh, I know people who uh, use certain not unusual whales, but I think uh, black box is one of them or i don't remember the name but uh, there's you know you you can use them if you know sp like exactly what you're looking for but i wouldn't get any of them with the thought that oh i'm not doing well option trading they these will give me ideas to trade like if you like these won't help these won't help you become a better trader these can help you you know find if you're like watching a certain ticker and and you're like oh that's an interesting order out of the normal flow maybe because i know a, maybe about a month back someone had posted uh, some weird options activity on stamp 
and then stamp ran like got bought out for like a hundred dollars higher than this the price and the options went crazy like that's something useful that maybe you wouldn't pick up normally just staring at at charts and stuff but i think a lot of i mean i can tell you that that most of these guys uh i won't speak specific names but uh, some of these very popular ones that are advertised a lot on on fintwit and stuff they're just taking all all the order flow or the option flow data from some api and then they're just visualizing it for you and then they're advertising it like they've found like the holy grail but really just giving you every single like relatively large uh option order which you know someone could be yellowing an order and it'll it'll look big to you and you're like oh well that's obviously a great trade and it's it's really not it's just someone who said like fuck it i'm gonna take this or it could be hedging like happy said like you you i i don't think especially new to options trading i don't think they're worth it when you're new you know maybe time sometime a lot down the road you you may have finally been like okay i think you know i'm, I'm doing well enough i think I, I might pay for this service just to give me like an additional edge to my trading sure but I, I don't think you need it starting off like you you really need to focus on probably three to five tickers starting off and just figuring out how to how to get used to options and and trading around that on those tickers that's all you need you don't need more noise <laughs> did y'all speak about the volatility of fridays yet or like when when the feds have a meeting or anything i know we see like a lot of unusual stuff when that happens oh yeah i mean i can i can do a quick thing uh so most tickers uh the expirations are on fridays and on friday you have um we call them zero zero dte zero data expiration options uh when you are trading on a Friday and your option expires on a Friday, you are going to be fighting an uphill battle, like a really bad one, because your theta is increasing exponentially, like your, your time decay, uh, and it's, it's ruining the rest of, of your premium. Like you're, If you are wrong in the morning, your, your option contract is probably not going to recover. It'll probably go worthless by end of day, which is why you usually want to roll your contract out. Uh, by to the next expiration date especially by wednesday and thursday because friday most of the time most like 90 percent of options just end up being worthless that's what happens on fridays if you but you can trade friday options like if you start on a friday you open up on a friday you close on a friday like do a quick trade you can get them for cheap and you can make really quick uh and profitable trades but it's it's also very risky um you know we we covered earnings um earlier ivy run-up same thing happens for some economic events especially the fed meetings fomc um there's one coming i think a week or two weeks from now um but the before those meetings you'll kind of see the iv kind of go up and the moot you know when they release their minutes uh you'll the, the market will kind of go a little bit a little bit volatile volatile uh, a little bit crazy your your premium will probably go all over the place for a bit um so you just want to be i guess careful especially if you're trading a a blue chip a big name like apple uh the banks you know these big well-known names that are very correlated to the overall market you want to you want to be uh, at least paying attention to when their earnings are and when there's going to be a fed meeting or a fed announcement or maybe the president is speaking on something you just want to at least have those in the back of your mind so you don't uh if something happens with your option or you want to avoid trading into that at least you know and you can you can act on it before you know if you're like in the moment and all of a sudden you're like oh my god what's happening you don't want to you don't want that to happen cuz that you start panicking that'll really ruin your decision making so if you know ahead of time, keep track of these things. I think, and I think Emu posts them in calendar of events, so you won't have to go looking too far. Um, but yeah, you just, a lot of these economic events can really mess with your premium, so you want to be careful of those. Yeah, uh, I wanted to go back to the 
um, option flow thing we're talking about. Again, I know most of you guys are penny traders. Um, so I see many times people tag me in an options like <clears throat> order flow thing that comes through for a penny ticker that's running. Um, you know, let's say recently we had BBIG. I know they have options and that thing ran like crazy. Um, I had some people tag me in like call sweeps or put sweeps that came through. Um, and I mean, it's kind of the same thing. You don't want to use them as a prediction. Um, like if someone's taking a ton of calls that it comes up on that call sweep thing for BBIG, that doesn't mean it's going to run more. Um, for all you know, that they could be completely short on the ticker, and then they just took what's for them a small position of calls in case it keeps going. Like I said before, to hedge. But with these penny tickers, you know, many times you never know. It could just be people completely fomoing um, and wanting to hit a home run, getting calls on this penny stock. Uh, so I'd definitely be very weary of all the order flow that comes through on penny tickers, especially if it already ran. Um, I guess let us know if you guys have, have any questions, of course. We've gone over a ton, so. You sh um, you know, didn't you use order flow for a little bit, like as confirmation or something? Like, didn't you use it? If you did, yeah, yeah. you want to speak to it a little bit? Oh, yeah, I was, uh, I was waiting for you guys. <laughs> but yeah, so I used um, order flow. I used un unusual whales, but as Chain mes uh, mentioned, there you need to have like a proper context and don't follow them blindly how i did it I had filters because there's a lot of noise there's because a, a lot of it is hedges all these big orders are hedges against their long positions um so you need to i did it i had filters to see if someone was constantly if there were constant sweep orders for a certain order um certain strike price that was constantly getting bid up or there was a big orders going through um for that strike that's how i was doing it there's like a lot of different filters but again when i saw a big order come through i would always look at the chart to, uh to give me confirmation be like okay this is setting up this stock is an accumulation so you know someone is accumulating is building an option option position here i never blindly followed uh just based on option flow or just hopped in this option flow gave me um, you know, it opened it from my eyes to the ticker, and then I would chart the ticker and plan my exits based on the chart, based on the option flow. Um, and again, yeah, sometimes option flows you can they, they get in because there's always someone that knows something. For example, uh, there was huge orders of Nvidia split um, the day before they announced it in the morning. The close before. Um, there were some big sweeps coming through um, and I bought some because it was such a big order and they were just getting constantly hit in the last two minutes of the close. So things like that. And the chart was coming out of a huge consolidation area. So that's one of my favorite setups. So, you know, the chart lined up with what the option flow was saying. So I always wait for those two, like the chart to confirm before following the flow, if that makes sense. But as Shane said, as a new new uh, trader, option trader, you don't need the flow. The chart will tell you all. Yeah. Um, so just moving on from flow, uh, I think I would be remiss if we didn't go over, um, like with expiration dates, how you can exercise contracts and what exactly that means. Um, so, uh, Chathan, if you just want to speak to that. Yeah. Um, so I'll just, I'll go over it quickly. Uh, cause I, I don't really exercise any options. I don't, but basically when you're, 
So an option, this, go, this goes back to what an option contract really is for. And an option contract basically gives you the right to buy or to sell uh, a certain amount of stock, 100 shares, um, at the strike price. So, and it gives you that right when the contract goes in the money. And I won't get into the basics of like, or the, you know, break evens and that sort of thing, but that's, that's basically how they work. Um, and so when you exercise your contract, let's say you exercise a call, when you exercise a call, you need to have the capital to buy a uh, hundred shares at the certain strike price of whatever stock the option contract is for. And you can ex and we're, uh, we're in the U.S., you know, trading U.S. markets. In Europe, options can only be exercised on expiration date. European options, European markets, only on expiration date. For U.S., you can exercise, you know, whenever you want, basically. As long as it's in the money, you can exercise it. Um, I think, I think S, there's some, it's not exactly the case, certain stocks. But for the most part, you can exercise as long as you're in the money. Um, and I don't think for the most part, you're going to, most of y'all are not going to be exercising just because it's not, I mean, if you sell puts, maybe you'll, you'll get exercised on, you can own stock that you want. Um, but I would, I wouldn't exercise in, unless you, you want to own that stock long-term in my opinion. Like I, there's no reason to not just sell the contracts. Uh, I know I just, okay, I just hit call. So put the put side would be if you already if you're long a put contract and you exercise it you have the you need to have the shares it's like a hedge so you have 100 let's say you have 100 shares of apple and i buy a 145 put when the 145 put goes in the money which means apple stock is below 145 let's say it goes all the way down to like 130 i'm holding this option i can exercise the 145 put and sell my 100 shares at 145 per share versus just selling at 130 uh, or whatever the, the stock price is below 145. So that's why you would use puts to hedge or that sort of thing. If you, I know another thing people, some people do is covered calls for their investments. Like you have 100 shares of Apple again, your long 100 shares of Apple, you can sell calls against that position. Uh, and in a way you're locking in certain amount of gains or you you lower your cost basis based on how much premium you collect from that call but i, I won't get into too much you can just look it up covered call and see how it works but that's just another way of um, using options but for the most part x basics just to sum up exercising your contract for calls gives you the right to own 100 shares at the strike price you selected if you exercise by expiration date on the put side, it gives you the right to sell a hundred shares at the strike price by a certain expiration date. Uh, and both of those are on condition that they're in the money either way. Uh, and that's about it. Thanks, Jathan. Um, I think that's pretty much, I guess all the basics of options. Um, so I guess, again, just reiterating what we did to see if anyone has questions. Um, we went over what options contracts are, um, what a call and a put is. We went over the options chain and all the Greeks and strike prices. We went over what at the money, out of the money, and in the money means. Um, we went over for a while about mitigating risk on options and about discipline and we went over order flow and then exercising your options contract so if anyone has any questions feel free to speak up or in the chat um, i guess for another couple minutes we'll just leave it open if anyone thinks of anything and then we'll wrap it up <laughs>